about our Father. So praise God for that. Thank you, Jesus, for this, for the for the life that we have in Him and the way that we've learned in the Old Testament how God, you know, His compassion, His love, His forgiveness. Oh, so much His forgiveness when you're reading through some of the stories and you want to just take them out and keep them out. And they keep coming back. They keep repenting because they keep wanting to go back into their old sin and their old flesh. But God always brings them back. He always forgives them when they come back. And he loves them even though they've done so much against him at times in the Old Testament. So he's such a loving God. And then in the New Testament, Jesus Jesus brings light into the world and he and his love for us shines bright and then the Holy Spirit inside of us um, you know wells up and he's a spring of life inside of us so let's get into it Matthew 8 and then Mark 2 ready I'm reading out of the Amplified Bible when Jesus came down from the mountain great throngs followed him behold a leper came up to him and prostrating himself worshiped him saying Lord if you are willing, you are able to cleanse me by curing me. And he reached out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing. And he cleansed him. I am willing, he said. Be cleansed by being cured. And instantly, he was cured and cleansed. That's the key. I am willing. And Jesus said to him, See that you tell nothing about this to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and present the offering that Moses commanded for a testimony to your healing and as evidence to the people. As Jesus went to Capernaum, a centron came up to him begging him and saying, Lord, my servant boy is lying at the house paralyzed and distressed with intense pain. And Jesus said to him, I will come and restore him. But the centron replied to him, Lord, I'm not worthy or fit to have you come under my roof but only speak the word and my servant boy will be cured. For I also am a man subject to authority with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard him, he marveled and said to those who followed him, who adhered steadfastly to him, conforming to his example in living, and if need be, in dying also, I tell you truly, I have not found so much faith. There is Jesus saying that faith was the thing that gets God, the faith. He loves the faith. I have not found so much faith as this with anyone even in Israel. I tell you, many will come from the east, west, and will sit at the table of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons and heirs of the kingdom will be driven out in darkness, outside where there'll be weeping and grinding of teeth. Then to the centron, Jesus said, go, it shall be done as you have believed. And the servant boy was restored with health that very moment. He believed, he said. And when Jesus went into Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying ill with a fever and he touched her hand and the fever left her and she got up and began waiting on him. That's all she, he did is touch her. When evening came, they brought to him many who were under the power of demons, and he drove out the spirits with the word and restored to health all who were sick. With the very word, he drove them out. All you need is a touch from Jesus, like the woman that was ill in the bed, and she got touched and healed. And all you need is that word from God. That word from the scriptures and that word from your heart that God gives you to drive it out. And thus he fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet. Isaiah, he himself took our weaknesses and carried our infirmities and bore away our, our diseases. Praise the Lord. Now Jesus, when he saw the great throngs around him, gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake. And a scribe, now he gave orders. See, God's given us, or Jesus has given us orders. And a scribe came up and said to him, Master, I will accompany you wherever you go. That's the part, obedience. And Jesus replied to him, Foxes have holes and the birds of the air have lodging places, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of the disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go bury 
my father. But Jesus said to him, follow me and leave the dead to bury their own dead. And after he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. So basically he's saying, follow me. Don't think about anything else. Just follow me. Trust me. Follow me. And after he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly, behold, there arose a violent storm in the sea. So the boat was being covered up by the waves, but he was sleeping. See the peace. And they went and awakened him, saying, Lord, rescue and preserve us. But he was sleeping. And they went and awakened him, saying, Lord, rescue and preserve Well, we are perishing. We are perishing. And he said, why are you timid and afraid? Jesus said, oh, you of little faith. Do you see what the opposite of fear of uh, faith is? It's fear. Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great and wonderful calm, a perfect peaceableness. And the men were stunned with bewildered wonder and marveled, saying, what kind of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? And when he arrived at the other side in the country of the Guardians, two men under the control of demons went to meet him, coming out of the tombs so fierce and savage that no one was able to pass that way. Let me turn this page. And behold, they shrieked and screamed, What have you to do with us, Jesus, Son of God? Have you come to torment us before the appointed time? Now at some distance from there, a drove of many hogs was grazing, and the demons begged him, If you drive us out and send us into the droves of hogs, and he said to them, Be gone. So they came out, and they went into the hogs. And behold, the whole drove rushed down to the steep bank into the sea and died in the water. All the hogs died. The spirits went into them. It has to go into something, some, someone, some, an animal or a person to be able to live. The spirits do. And they knew that they were going to be cast out. They didn't know. They, so... They wanted to at least go into the hogs. The herdsmen fled and went into the town and reported everything, including what had happened to the men under the power of demons. And behold, the whole town went out to meet Jesus. And as soon as they saw him, they begged him to depart from their locality. Can you imagine? They were begging him to depart because they didn't understand. They had fear. But with, with Christ inside of us, what a blessing. Because we can take authority and we can say, go, Satan, go, demons, get out, go. They're, you have no right here. And they have to flee. And that's a blessing. That's a blessing from the Lord. And they didn't want him because of the fear. They were afraid. They didn't understand what he was doing. But wow, what a miracle that was where those demons left that person and went into the hogs. Okay, now, now we're going into Luke. Or I mean Mark, I'm sorry. Mark 2. Mark 2, ready? With the Amplified again. Mark 2 says, And Jesus, having returned to Capernaum, after some days it was rumored about that he was in the house, probably Peter's. And so many people gathered together there. there. There was no longer room for them, not even around the door. And he was discussing the word. And they came bringing a paralytic to him who had been picked up, and he was being carried by four men. And when they could not get him to a place in front of Jesus because of the throng, they dug through the roof above him. And when they had scooped out an opening, they let down the quilt or mat upon which the paralyzed man lay. When Jesus saw their faith, that's faith in action right there. When they, I mean, they're not going to go through all of that to not believe. They're going to Put a hole in the wall and send the man down through the wall through the hole because they couldn't get through the crowds they're not going to do it with not believing they do believe that's so jesus said wow I, he saw their faith their confidence in god through him he said to the paralyzed man son your sins are forgiven put away the the that wait and put away, that is, the penalty of remitted, the sense of guilt removed, and you are made upright and in right standing with God. This is amplified, so it's adding to help you understand what it's saying. He says, son, your sins are forgiven, basically. 
Now some of the scribes were sitting there holding a dialogue with themselves as they questioned in their hearts, Why does this man talk like this? He is blaspheming? Who can forgive sins? They didn't realize who he was. Who can forgive sins except God alone? They didn't know he was God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one. And at once Jesus became fully aware in his spirit that they debated within themselves. He could sense. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you too. You sense something inside and go with it because God is telling you something or he's leading you, he's prophesying through you for some reason, for something, someone even to help. So he says, he saw in himself, he said, there's something, they're speaking about me and he sensed it in his spirit that they were debating. So he says, why do you argue? Why do you debate about all this in your hearts? Which is easier, Jesus said, to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven or put away or to say, rise, take up your sleeping bag or your mat and, and walk. But that you may know, but that you may know beyond a doubt that the Son of Man has the right and the authority and power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralyzed man, I say to you, Rise up, pick up, carry your mat, and be going, go and go on home. And he rose up at once, picked up the, the mat, and went out before them, so that they were all amazed and recognized and praised. They finally re they realized he is. We, they thanked God. They recognized, praised, and thanked God, saying, We have never seen anything like this before. And Jesus went out again along the seashore. And the multitude kept gathering around him, and he kept teaching them. And he was passing by, he saw Levi, which was Matthew, son of Alphaeus, sitting in the tax office, and he said, follow me. Be joined. And he arose and joined him as his disciple, and sided with his party, and accompanied him. And as Jesus, together with his disciples, sat at the table in Levi's house, Many tax collectors and people definitely stained with sin were dining with him, for there were many who walked the same road with him. And the scribes belonging to the party of the Pharisees, when they saw that he was eating with those known to be especially wicked sinners, they were looking at him like, wow, you're, you're eating with sinners and tax collectors? That's what they're thinking. They said, said to his disciples, why does he eat and drink? The disciples are saying, why does he eat and drink with tax collectors and notorious sinners? And when Jesus heard it, he said to them, those who are strong and well have no need of a physician, but those who are weak and sick. I came not to call the righteous ones to repentance, but sinners. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were observing a fast. And some people came and asked Jesus, why are John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fasting, but your disciples are not doing so? And Jesus answered, can the wedding guest fast while the bridegroom is with him? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them and they will fast in that day. No one sews a patch of unshrunk goods on an old garment. If he does, the patch tears away from it. The new the new from the old and and it becomes bigger and worse and no one puts new wine into old wine skin if he does the wine will burst the skins the wine is lost the bottles destroyed but new wine is put into new wine skins one sabbath he was going along beside the fields of standing grain and as they made their way his disciples began to pick off the grains and the pharisees said to him look why are they doing what is not permitted or lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to, hold on. Oh, praise you, Jesus. I'm sorry. He said to them, have you never read what David did when he was in need and hungry, he and those who were accompanying him? Now he went into the house of God when Abathar was the high priest and ate the sacred loaves set forth before God, which is not permitted or lawful for any but the priest to eat, and how also gave to those who were with him. And Jesus said to them, the Sabbath was made on any account for the sake of man, not, from the, not for 
man for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath is for us so we can take and rest. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. So way up here, we're talking right now about how he was eating with tax, tax collectors and sinners and notorious sinners and drinkers. and But God, Jesus said, it's the sick who need me, not the well, not the righteous. It's the sick who need me. And that's the humility. That's the humility. And now, and that's the love, the love. And now, um, then Jesus answered, can the wedding guests, okay, now the wedding guests were fasting. Some of them were fasting. And they said, well, why do your disciples not? Because Jesus was with them. But when Jesus said, but when I leave, then they will fast. And that's why we fast now too, because Jesus now, he is in heaven, but we fast and pray, we believe. But at the time he was with them and they were doing it out of religious sake. That's why they were, the other people were asking, you know, why do your disciples not fast? Well, that was religious sake. Just like um, looking at Jesus, like, well, why are you eating with those people? Well, that was you know, to show them that this is the love of God. This is the grace of God. He, he reaches in to pull you to himself, to restore you, to heal you. And the fasting is for us also not to move the hand of God. That's another wrong thinking. It's not for us, him to move, or us to move the hand of God. It's for us to get ourselves quiet and, and trusting him, keeping our eyes and our focus on the word and on God not thinking about even eating, just focusing on God and the word, taking that time to just listen to him and talk to him and clear ourselves and hear from him. It's not to move the hand of God. And the same thing with the, um, and then the new wine. The new wine is put into new wine skin because the Holy Spirit restores us and then he pours his new wine, the Holy Spirit, into us, Jesus says. He restores us to health, to life when we ask Jesus in our heart and that new wine goes in and it heals us. If it's put into an old wineskin that doesn't understand, it's not going to do anything. It's going to just go. But when the Holy Spirit can come into someone who's newly created in Christ and we are saved, we love him, he is in us. He's, it, we are new wineskin with new wine the Lord, the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said the Sabbath. Now the Sabbath was made on account and for the sake of man, Jesus even said this, not for man of the Sabbath. People always think, okay, we got to honor God and just not do anything on the Sabbath. We have to go to church. We have to do this. We have to stay in. No, he did it for us that we would have rest, just like the fasting. He did it for us that we would get our heart and our heart clean and pure and, and just hearing him getting out of all the clutter of the world and of and eating is a big thing when we take our time to wait and not eat and ponder on the things of God it just really holds our flesh from the thing that we want so much and it brings our spirit man stronger and our flesh you know it weakens our flesh so our spirit man can get bigger than our flesh so our Spirit man is bigger than our flesh, and then it feeds our soul. The Spirit of God, the Word of God feeds our soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And Jesus saying, the Sabbath was made for man so we can rest. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. He is Lord of the Sabbath. He is Lord. He is to be praised and worshiped. But this is for us to take that time away and be alone with him. So praise God. And I just wanted to say it would be an encouragement to... um. Every Sunday, I was talking to my son about this, it would be really good if we would try and do this. Turn off our phones, turn off um, social media, don't even touch it for the day, put it away. You know, even silence it or even turn it off if you can. You know, I know some people can't, but if you can, just turn it off and don't get in, in on it. And let God minister to you every Sunday. Go out for a walk in the woods or in a walk down the road with your dog or with your children or your husband and wife. Just spend time or your mom or dad, you know, just go and spend time with them and with the Lord by yourself even. Go walk in a park, sit under a tree, be out in the nature and let God just breathe in the nature, breathe in the presence of the Lord, breathe in his spirit. The sun shining through the day, the 
breeze blowing through the, the trees, you know, it's just a time for us to just reflect and spend time with him and watch and see how much you're going to have more time. You're going to enjoy yourself more because you're not on social media. Social media just pulls you and you don't realize what it's doing. It pulls from you. You need time with God. You need time to know that you are special in Christ and Christ in you. You need it for yourself. You need it to worship God. Let him be lifted up and love on him. He needs it. So praise God. He needs it because he's done it. And uh, if anybody's wondering about my earrings, I got these earrings from my daughter's friend, Kiana Harum. Kiana Harum, H-A-R-E-M. Uh, she's on Instagram. And if you want to get um, these kind of earrings or any kind of um, keychains uh, key made or any kind of um, like a car, something on the mirror that hangs like a, um, you know, um, rainbow or whatever, you know, she can make little things. She can make things for uh, flowers to hold flowers which I have, I have the whole set. And I my color is this color, so I wanted to wear it today just to show it and also to help sell it. And she sells them if you go on her Instagram or um, look her up, uh, Kiana Harum. I wish I knew her, her uh, website, but you can find her and be blessed. Remember, your words are your way to victory, and I will see you tomorrow on Fortunate. Thank you for coming.